Hey there, this is Katherine Cartwright. Welcome to Scrapbook Pal channel. Today I'm going to make a couple of projects using some Spellbinder dies. These are the Spellbinders Nature's Botanical Garden Collection. So there's a bunch of different dies and embossing folders and things like that in the collection. So be sure and check out the store. Okay, so I am going to jump right in here I am going to make some flowers. This first die set that I'm using is the azalea, and it also has a um, garden pot in it. So you can see that to the left um, of the screen. And so I'm going to start by cutting some leaves. There, there's this leaf die, and then there are these um, three and two petal dies that allow you to create a flower. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to make the flower. I'm going to make some of it off screen. Uh, because this would take too much time, but I'm going to hopefully give you a good flavor of how this project will go together. All right, so I have got the three stems cut, the three leaves cut here of my flower, and then you can see there's some little score marks in there, and I'm just going to take my fingernail. I'm going to use a bone folder as well, but I'm just going to kind of fold these down, kind of working the fiber. Now, you could keep these totally flat if you wanted to, or you can make these as dimensional as you wish, um, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm just going to fold these up, and then I'm going to bring in a bone folder here, and kind of work a little bit of the fibers of my cardstock here. So again, you can see there's the um, the little um, score line, I should say, of the flower. And then it has kind of a little ruffled edge to it, this um, flower. And so I'm just going to use my bone folder, kind of fold that up, working that fiber, breaking it down a little bit, which, which will give me a little bit of flexibility with the cardstock. And then um, I'm going to come back and kind of fold it back as well. And that will just give it some movement here. You could um, do some ink blending on top of these to add additional detail if you wanted to. You could cut these from um, alcohol-friendly paper and color them with your Copics, any color you want to. So there's a lot of flexibility with a product like this in terms of dimension and details that you want to add, okay? All right, so I'm just kind of folding these edges back a little bit after I've folded them up a little bit. And so I'm getting, hopefully, some good little movement in my little petal here. And then when I'm satisfied with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pinch these three leaves together of my flower. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue on the back. I am using liquid glue. I'm not going to use a dry adhesive on this. Um, I really want those fibers to get wet and to um, be you know glued well together and then I'm going to kind of just twist my flower and move my petals um, exactly where I want them to go. The thing I love about a product like this is it should be organic. Perfection to me is not really the goal of having this perfectly uh, shaped flower because in nature flowers you know form how they're going to form. And so um, I'm going to kind of repeat the same process with my leaf here. There are some score lines in there. I'm just going to kind of use my fingernails to get those folded up to add some dimension and movement to my leaf there. And then there's a nice size stem that will allow me to attach this all to my card. Okay, so I'm going to use the Alta New Playful Leaves. I um, die cut a piece of lighter colored cardstock. And I ran that through my machine to emboss that. So I'm going to have a nice detailed embossed image for my background. And I thought that would tie nicely together with the flowers and the flower pot together. So I'm going to cut out my flower pot. And this flower pot is just the cutest thing. Um, I will say my finished card is going to be an A2 sized, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. So the piece of light green paper is four inches by five and a quarter and then I'll finish that off onto um, my card base. So I just wanted to reference that for you for size purposes. So this this flower pot is a nice size and um, and there's some additional pieces, the little saucer that you can add and then there's kind of the top of your pot to add some dimension to it if you wanted to. So you could have a lot of fun with this. I'm going to take some vintage photo here from Distress and I'm just going to do a little bit of ink blending to just darken up those edges and then I'll do a little bit on the bottom of the saucer and then I will come back for that front piece that will go across the flower pot at the top. I'm just going to darken that up to add a little bit of um, contrast and a little bit of dimension 
to this. All right, so now I have gotten all my components together. I've made five flowers total and I've got some stems uh, to go with it. I'm gonna glue down my flower pot directly onto my card. And then that happy birthday sentiment that I stamped and put at the bottom, that comes from the Avriel Inside Birthday Greeting Sentiment Set. So that's all linked in the description. Now I'm gonna take the saucer for my flower pot and I'm gonna put it as close to the bottom as possible. I'm going to start with that because I want to be able to fill my pot on my card and make sure that I have enough room. Um, I am known for doing things backwards sometimes, um, but I want to go ahead and ground my pot here so I don't have the error of having just tons of flowers coming out the top. So again, I reference that this is an A2 sized card. You could make this a five by seven easily and you would have an even fuller pot of flowers you would have more height to work with. So um, you could consider that just making a bigger card and then you can fill your page with more of these beautiful little sweet flowers and leaves. Okay, so I've got three flowers here that I'm gonna put down and then I'm gonna um, place some of my leaves. I like, when I'm doing something like this, I like to go ahead and kind of place things and get an idea of how things are gonna fit on here and then I can kind of fill in the details later. All right, so when I'm satisfied, I'm kind of holding down my leaf um, in the places that I want it to be, and then I'm gonna just pick up each leaf and glue it down, hopefully not moving it too much out of place from where I kind of like it to be. And again, just using some of my liquid glue here and gluing this directly onto this embossed panel. And then I'm gonna put a couple at the top um, that will go over a little bit on the card and again, you could always make a bigger card to accommodate more greenery and beautiful flowers. All right, so I like how that's coming together. And then I've got my flowers again. And uh, what I love about, also love about products like this, besides you can make them as dimensional as you want, is that you can make them any color that you want. Um, I'm very much a fan of, you know, we're artists and we can make things whatever color we want. We can make it as realistic as we want or um, you know, it, not have it realistic. So there are certainly purple azaleas in the world, but if you wanted to make um, blue ones or whatever color, you certainly could, all right? Because there's a ton of varieties and um, you can just kind of make them however you want them to be. All right, so I've got my three glued down here and I am gonna add a little bit of foam square just to the back where those pieces are glued together. And I, because I really want these uh, flowers to be kind of um, standing up a little bit on the card and not totally glued flat on there. I did want to take a second. I'm not going to use the little centerpiece that's included um, the stamens of the flower. The st I think it's stamen. Um, I'm trying to remember all the parts of the flower, the little centerpiece. <laughs> and so I'm going to cut this out of yellow. I'm going to trim this down. Again, I'm going to make a little cut into each of these little kind of um, pieces, the fronds or whatever you call them. And, um, and then I'm just going to show you how to put this together. So if you wanted to use this on your card, um, you would know how this works. So you're going to add a little strip of glue here and I've got to get my tweezers in the right direction. I'm left-handed. And so I'm trying to think, how do I want to hold this to be able to roll it with my left hand? And so there's a little tab at the end that allows you to kind of grab it with your tweezers, or you could use a a little tip of a pencil. There's a lot of ways you can make that. And then you have the inside of your flower. So you could make this even more dimensional. Okay, so I just wanted to share that little bit with you so you could see what that little fun piece is for. All right, so I am gonna add some um, gemstones to the center of this using a bright orange that is a good size. So it will show up in the center of my flower. And then I'm just gonna kind of work these around and add them where you can see the centers. And there my pot is coming together. It's got some decent dimension, uh, but still should go through the mail. All right, and now I'm gonna add this onto a green card base. This is the same green I used for my leaves. And here is a fun and easy pot of azaleas to send birthday wishes through the mail. Okay, so I have a second set here. This is also from that same collection from Spellbinders, the Nature's Botanical Garden. And so I have cut, uh, there's a little stem in this, and this is Forsythia is the name. 
of the flower. In this case, there is a really cute stem included that I have cut from alcohol-friendly paper, and I am using my markers here, E23 and E27, and I'm just going to kind of add the 23, and then I'm going to just do a few little swipes of that darker 27 on here, and then I'll just come back and briefly blend this together. Uh, there should absolutely be some interest and movement in the stem and some light and some dark areas. And so just putting those two colors together has helped me achieve that goal. Now I've left the top. Uh, I want to color this green. This is where the little uh, leaves and the flowers will grow out of in spring. And so I'm just trying to pick a color here, a green. I had some on my desk and I decided on YG23 that would work well with the color of the um, leaves that I had already cut with my little die cutting machine. Okay, so I'm going to cut a bunch of these leaves. Again, I'm going to do some of this work off camera, but I do, I will show you how I put these flowers together. All right, so I've got a bright yellow um, flower that I want to use paper. And so I'm going to cut these and these cut three at a time, which is so nice because these flowers are a little bit smaller. So it makes it very quick and easy to run these through your machine. All right, so now I'm gonna take E13 and I'm gonna put just a little center dot on this flower because I'm gonna pinch it pretty tight. I want it to be pretty tight. This is kind of how this flower looks in nature. But again, you can make your flower look however you want to. But I'm gonna add some glue here. I'm gonna put a piece of paper down uh, so I'm not gluing this directly onto my mat. And then you can see I've got a little bit of darkness in there in the center of that flower. So it just kind of tricks the eye and adds uh, that kind of center part of your flower. I'm going to pinch this up again, and then I'm going to add some more color. Again, this is E13. And um, it's easier, and I'll show you in a second, it's easier if you color all of these before you start folding. Um, and so I learned that, and so I'll show you that it's just easier to go ahead and color them. And then you can start folding these. But I want these really to stand up. And here it is. I'm doing the center of that. It's just easier to get that little job done. And so I'm just going to pinch these up. And they work really, really well. And then I will continue filling my stem. And so I just took a second here and glued all those down. And then I'm going to take that E13 again since I had it out. And I want to uh, run just a little bit. My leaves are so light that you really can't see the little score line. And so I decided to run a little bit of my Copic marker, a very light brown that I was using earlier for those centers. And then I'm just going to fold these leaves up. This just gives it very easily, uh, in a very easy process, it gives a lot of um, interest onto your leaf. And I'll use my tweezers here to help me place some of this around and um, I'm just going to put a few over here because I really want those flowers to stand out but the green just kind of balances out um, and uh, gives a little pop of color here and there all right and there are three different sizes so that's nice because again that gives just some added detail a lot of details in this set both of these sets and across the whole collection from Spellbinders there's just so many fun things you could do I could see Taking the stem, you know, you could you could make a big pot of flowers and put your stems in there as well and make a huge bouquet of different color azaleas. I mean, there's just a lot of things you could do with these products. All right, so I'm just going to finish gluing these on. And then I am going to turn this into a tag. I'm not going to make a card. I decided this would be a very fun little tag. The um, stem is such a great size, so I've made a rectangle of about um, three and a half by about... Uh, three inches and so um, this stem will fit on here really nicely. I'm going to add a piece of twine and I've stamped some more birthday sentiments. I had that Avriel inside birthday greeting stamp set out which is super super cute and so I decided to add a little happy birthday at the top and a sentiment on the bottom and then I will glue my stem onto there and I have a really fun quick 3d tag so this one you wouldn't have to worry about mailing because you could tie this onto a plant or maybe a little gift that you're giving to a friend who is a gardener um, maybe they would appreciate having this really cool 3d uh, tag with the beautiful forsythia flowers on there okay so i hope you enjoyed this um, video sharing some of the spellbinders 
Nature's Botanical Garden Collection from Scrapbook Pal. Be sure and check out their store and don't forget to subscribe. They have so many great videos and blog posts and content and of course terrific products in the store. So happy crafting and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day.